We're from Kentucky, born and raised here, and we have a lot of pride in the state. We love living and working in Eastern Kentucky, where you know your neighbors. What really drew me here and has kept me here is the forests, it's the, the rivers, the mountains. But I think it's more than that. I think people are drawn to community. They want to be around each other. The economic, cultural history of the area is also really unique. We certainly believe that, that it's the hardest working region in the country. It's a hard place to live, too. There's a lot of work to be done in Kentucky. Well, like any, any manufacturer, not being able to get the basic supplies that you need can be devastating if you're not prepared for it. What we do and what we have learned to do is to just be as flexible as possible. If production in these coffee growing countries is, continues to get hit in ways that it's be, begun getting hit by um, climate change, uh, I, I'm worried about what that's going to mean to the supply. On the brewery side, the cost of grain, the quality of grain, uh, the places that grain can be grown are already being affected by climate change. Climate change affects our operation in a lot of ways. Everything from the trees that are growing in the woods right now that are going to someday be barrels. Field crops are very uh, dependent on climate, so you know the humidity, the temperature. Building uh, facilities that, that are climate resilient and, and you know, ensure that we can have a, a stable food supply year round is something we're committed to. At Pivot, one of the, the main messages that we have is that hopefully we need to be good stewards. And with that, I think we are long past the point of recognizing the impact that humans have had on the climate. Most recently, the last two springs, we've had three flood events. So kind of each spring for the last couple of years. So those level of floods had been happening about once a decade. You know, now we've seen three of those in two years. We are seeing power outages happen more frequently. We're seeing different events to, to make that happen. People are seeing more variations in their month-to-month -month cost of energy. One of the things that we could do uh, to really offset our power bill and help us stay in business was to think about solar energy on this building. I was a skeptic. Um, I thought they did it in California. It would not work in Kentucky. From day one, the system cash flowed. We designed it and built it the way that we did with the solar panels as the roof um, so that people could see it um, and so that people could really kind of almost reach out and touch the solar panels. You know, if I pause and think about the next 10 years, I'm, I'm anxious, you know, and I'm anxious primarily about my access to, to supply. As selfish as that sounds, it's, it, you know, without access to great coffee and a steady supply at a price that, that makes sense for us, you know, we can't run our business. I think we can continue to be an energy leader in the nation uh, using renewable sources of energy. Our opportunity in Kentucky is to not be a leader in the U.S., but a world leader on what it means to you know, conserve and preserve our water, our land, and our environment for the next generation. The challenge is the opportunity. I think we have a little bit of an obligation to the community and the environment to, you know, be stewards of, you know, sustainability. Not only just the longevity of our business, for our employees, for the local economy, but, uh, you know, just from a, a standpoint of doing the right thing. Like other small business owners, you're constantly weighing cost and benefit. I think we have gotten to the point now, we're so far along with climate change, that equation almost doesn't even matter. We have to start doing things. Uh, businesses have to start making those investments to make the changes to become more sustainable.